Okay. Well, it is what it is. Okay. So anyways, I like using the medium airbrush. It's obviously, I don't know if the text is going to be backwards for you. I have literally no idea. <laughs> I have literally no idea, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm under 100 videos and they're like two to three bits. So, you know, figuring it out, figuring it out. Um, so medium airbrush, I usually use that just because it's not going to be as hard of a line as you'll get on usually on the hard airbrush, obviously. But if you go for the soft and you're, for myself, I just end up putting way too much pressure. Another thing you may be noticing, uh, this might bother people who draw. Um, I don't use the paper like feel um, screen protector. It's uh, I did have it at one point and I liked it. I, I thought it was, it was great for the transition um, from paper, uh, purely paper over to, over to digital. It was definitely great for that transition, but I don't know, like it started peeling and started just looking really bad. And uh, I don't know, you know, so I just kind of took it off and, and I don't know, like I, I maybe I'm one of the few, few people who doesn't mind drawing on uh, like a smooth surface. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, anyways, okay. So one thing I was playing around with earlier was I am one of the few people who do like starting with eyes. I don't know, few people do a lot of artists like starting with eyes. I like to, it kind of just brings some pop, some life to it. So what I am wanting to do here is just kind of basically redrawing, exploring, experimenting with some of the brushes here, trying really hard not to make this absolutely adorable, unfortunately AI generated cat, uh, yeah, ugly. It's absolutely adorable. You know what? I just Googled uh, AI cat. If this is somebody's drawing. Wow. Beautiful. It's amazing. And this cat that you have put, obviously, a lot of painstaking time and effort into making this adorable thing. I will absolutely thrash it and make it look like trash. So that is just, you know, that yay, forewarning. Um, absolutely sorry uh google told me it was ai <laughs> I, I i would not purposely do this if this was someone else's creation ai feels right now at least it's a uh, fair <laughs> it, it, it feel like, feels like it's fair right now until it catches on so what i was just experimenting with is first um yeah you know one thing that I feel is making this cat look very cute and in this endeavor to make it look less cute is um, some of the colors here that's using. They're using a really, really beautiful palette, uh, soft colors. Uh, you know, you got some like, uh, also like, a, I guess like a, like a, not even a lavender, I guess like a baby blue, a powder blue. Um, but pastels, very, very gentle, very um, approachable colors. So what I want to do is I'm throwing in, you know, greens, yellows, reds, things like that. Things that are kind of like a little off-putting, things that actually completely go against the color grading, um, because it gives you that little, like, yeah, that little unnerving feeling, and that's what I'm kind of kind of going for. So I started off with the this eye. I was going to say with the right eye. It is my right. Um, it looks like it may be your left. <laughs> okay, so um, the way I usually start is when I'm redrawing something is I do always start with the eyes. Just for me, if I can bring some kind of life to the eye area, if I can see some kind of something that I like right away in the eyes, it's for me, it's a catalyst to keep going. You know, it just uh, keeps the fire going. It's like, okay, whoa, I can see where this is going. I want, I want to keep uh, striking while the fire is hot, the iron's hot. Um, so I started with that so i just added a blob of orange and you can see that there's already they have some kind of reflection there's uh some shading here and i'm going to be primarily going along with all of that uh just basically enhancing it right and kind of like while drawing it i mean kind of taking out the digitized pixelated look you know i did have to blow up this image so it is kind of pixelated so through the drawing process it will kind of smooth out some of, the, some of those lines too so, and I went layer by layer. I put that as the core. I just threw it like a, an orange drop right onto the eye there. And then I started kind of smoothing out, if you can see right here, I had a tiny little highlighted circle in the middle there, right? Because we have the light coming in from over here, 
this over area or area over here, right? So as you can see, it's hitting the eye over here. Now, usually that would be the end of what you'd see when the light hits something, boom, see, there's a highlight and then there's nothing really, there's no real blend, right? But here, because you're dealing with something that's it's translucent, it's an eyeball. So there actually is going to be the, the light kind of going through certain layers and, and hitting certain layers within the eye. And that's why they're able to, in this original drawing here, let's take this back off here. They kind of did it. They kind of did. So this big one here, you can tell that it's going over. It's a very, very prominent white. You can't see through it. And it's on top of the black, uh, the pupil, as well as the blue of, of the iris. Right, you can see it's kind of covering it. You can almost even see that they kind of gave it a, a shading of, of sorts, which is kind of strange. Um, and this highlight right there as well is on the surface of the eye. So they didn't actually put any reflections in the eye. These maybe, possibly, they're 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 very very light, but there's a, a light blue glow um, where the light should stop, and and it's actually light blue around here, and that is. The light permeating throughout the the eye and still coloring this area so we're going to want to be doing things like that um but but highlighting it as well so like i said throwing the orange dot kind of gave it a center i really just wanted to have the people i wanted to have a point of center with most cute cats or cute animals you know the baby doll effect right you, there's just a, that big black a, i guess adorable massive pupil iris kind of thing going on you know and then when you start making things like that, then it's, it's far, you know, it's not, not as cute, right? Okay. And then, so like I said, now we're adding in this. Now, that it, this is for the pupil. Oh, I guess that would be, this is now actually the iris. Uh, so just before you get to like the black part in the eye. I've noticed in a lot of eyes, you'll see like when you're looking at eyes, there's like the main color. And then you'll see like almost like, it's like jagged, you know what I mean? Like you'll see like flecks of, of versions of that color going through like lighter and darker shades. If someone's a brown eye, they'll have like maybe like golds and yellows and, and, and black and stuff like that. And it kind of like together looks like a, uh, you know, a brown color. Um, so I, like kind of striations, you know? And so this is the final hue of the iris before you get into, into the pupil. And so I started just bringing out, now see there, you can see, I started bringing out those striations a little, just just slightly, right? Because you don't want to put too much emphasis on it because remember like this is, the cat is first of all this, this big, right? You know, like super detailed, fine lines are going to actually really, really stand out. So too much is going to be too, too much. And also the light is only going to be highlighting so much as well, right? And now the final, layer for me before going back into shading so i go i go by colors so i do the orange and then there's like a light hue of like a yellow and then like the extra yellow flex and the last layer i go for is the, the ending highlights see now like the way i add my highlights i did follow sort of what they did right they have this there there and I think there's sort of, oh yeah, they did have some kind of blob there. I just really went ham with those. I went pretty hard on it, but see, so like I did a really, really hard white line there and there. And that is reflecting of like the light that's coming from this side. I'm gonna probably wanna take it out a bit because it looks more like the light is actually coming almost basically from behind. And then this is like a highlight, a highlight over here. You know what I mean? So. That's why there's it's all blown out white and then it's darker here. So that tells us the light was actually behind the subject. And there's a soft, there's like some kind of like, because it's darker over here. So that means there's what I'm thinking is it's reflecting off of. So light is coming from behind and it's reflecting off of something over here, which is just highlighting this area. So actually, both my highlighting and theirs is kind of wrong to be completely honest because there is no light source coming from over here that should be making it like this um let's fix that let's do it in real time let's do something about that okay i always like to duplicate a, a layer and then um 
and then make it invisible just be uh, just before I do any, any like hard um, erasing like destructive things to my layers. Okay, that's all right. I think I think what will look a little better, to be honest, is I might have to kind of redraw this a little bit more. Well, hey, that's what we're here for, right? Okay. I think I'm okay with deleting that right now. I tend to also, uh, I like to get rid of layers and I also like to combine my layers. That's not something you probably shouldn't follow that as any kind of an example, to be, <laughs> to be honest. For me, that is purely through survival uh, of using or, you know, getting a tablet that it just didn't have as much memory as I really needed it to have, you know. So in doing all my creating, I've, I've had to kind of also, um, you know, temper it uh, with with what the final product was or I'd have to, you know, offload things um, or do some stuff on my on my computer. And I really, really don't like drawing on my computer anymore. I'm really honest. Ever since I've started doing tablet drawing, I truly, truly don't want to go back. Okay. Okay, so what I've been doing here is I'm just grabbing some of the colors here and I'm getting rid of this highlight because, uh, as we said, it's, well, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Looking far better already. Yeah, that I, I don't know why they had that. Um, hey, it's AI. It's an AI. You know what? Maybe I'm giving the AI far too much credit. It still generated a very, very, very adorable uh, start off point. Okay, so what I'm doing here is when you're doing any, any kind of highlighting on something that's on something that's like um, sort of transparent or translucent. Like I said before, it's going to be going through, right? But it's the light is going to be hitting different things in that translucent thing. And when we highlight those different things inside, that's how you get the depth. That's how you can see that like, oh, wow, there's this is kind of transparent. This isn't just like a bowling ball, you know, like the, the light hits a bowling ball. You just see the reflection on top of the bowling ball. If the bowling ball, ball is see-through, the only way that you would know that is not just because it's transparent, is that you would see the light reflecting off of things inside of the ball as well. And that's what gives it also the depth, right? And that's what we're, we're trying to establish, establish here. So the heaviest white lines and the white dots there, that's where the light is directly hitting the first surface, right? So that's going to be the main eye. And I'm okay with that dot as much as it, truthfully, that dot breaks uh, all laws of physics. Um, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that because it's, it's a very cute cat. It's, it's a very cute cat. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I like that. Perfect. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is, so yeah, so I have this and this are the main highlights and these right there, that's the light that's hitting the inside. And like I said, again, the yellow gold is the result of some of the light permeating through the eye as well. I'm going to put a little bit more white. Um, I'm going to go a little sharp and I'm going to go right on these areas there just it'll give it a tad bit more depth and it'll make it pop just a, a tad bit more and i'm kind of i think it'll give it a, a tad bit more creepy effect as well i think i think i have to press harder <laughs> <laughs> i i don't explore with a lot i really you know what i said i was going to explore with all these brushes and, and i haven't been the um the airbrush is my, it's my comfort zone. I, I, there's a certain level of control and, and chaos that comes with using it that I just love. Uh, see what I mean? Like you can kind of see that, right? 
can see that it 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 gives nice smooth lines, but then when you watch it's like a little scraggly chaos, you know, make things just a little less pretty. It's 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 great at that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that actually. So our beginning would have been, let's see, let's say, right? There's Kitty. Pretty good beginnings. And then, yeah, there we go. It's kind of like mesmerizing, you know, like kind of going for some kind of like de demonic kind of a thing, you know, maybe like possessed. Well, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I was going to actually try and make it into a Pokemon. Um, truth be known, I don't really know any Pokemon beyond like maybe the second or third generation. So, and from my memory, this doesn't look close enough to any one of them that would warrant, my God, the amount of hours it would take to redo this. So now that we're 20 minutes in and we have one eye almost done, <laughs> Because this is the beauty of doing a live stream, right? I don't know if I want to just the the simplistic thing would be to I am going to do a destructive layer. There we go. Um, would be to mirror that, right? To take that eye and and I want to see like would that work? Would that save me time? I mean, it looks. It looks pretty creepy. I mean, I'll give it that. I don't know if it looks good. <laughs> here, let's try and distort it. Let's see if we can, uh, let's see here. Okay. Oh my God. Hey, that's, it's almost sort of kind of looking like not major trash. <laughs> I think I'm going to actually keep it. I think uh, not as a final, but I mean, I can, yeah, I can work with this as a beginning spot for sure. You know, it's just... Erase a little, clean up the lines a little. Okay. I was going to originally play music while doing this. Like, you know, like obviously the safe, safer one said that you can, that you, that you can actually use while streaming. Um, but you know, the more to kind of manage, I'm just not, I'm just not feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not feeling that, you know. You know, you know that thing that would really enhance the the user experience, you know, the viewer experience. You know, I'm just I'm just not there. <laughs> I'm just not there. No, no. Um I just didn't want my attention being diverted elsewhere. I get distracted easily enough as it is. So um, having another thing to uh, take my attention knowingly does not knowingly work for me. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm, I'm sort of liking where this is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I'm going to have to do a little bit with the shading on that, you know, re retweak it, because it's looking really opaque, right? See what looked really translucent and like, oh, it's, it's glowing, right? But everything here should be just a little bit darker. Um, maybe, maybe even just by, because another feature is if you're completely new to Procreate, just like with any kind of program, there's an opacity control, meaning that, you know, you, it's, you can either be completely opaque or completely transparent, right? I'm going to maybe find that comfortable area. Because if I make it a little less transparent, that'll automatically make it a little darker. And then, you know what I'll do? I'm going to use, use the black of the eye there as kind of my map. And just try and match that. 
shape a little better, you know. I can get more yellow over here. Yeah. Man, this is. This is the most exciting stream on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you there for being there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me. <laughs> hey, what do you know? That actually turned out not so bad. That 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 looks that looks all right. That kitty looks all right so far. So far, that kitty looks all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Um, you know, maybe maybe I'm kind of like feeling this this orange white kind of vibe. Maybe what if like there's like a fire type of thing? Hey, isn't that that's a Pokemon? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's right. There's like a fire cat somewhere. I mean, there's got to be a fire cat. Someone's someone's by now knowing that there's how many generations of these animals. They got to be running out of animals at this point. Someone's got to put fire and cat together at some point. And please let it not be recently. Like that sounds like a very core, you know, like. It feels like that should be like for a second gen kind of an idea. Anyways, let's go with that idea. Um, so I'm thinking. Here, let's. I'm gonna make a sketch layer. Here, we'll put those eyes on the same layer, and I'm gonna pick a blue, and I'll show you guys just kind of like, just quickly, kind of what 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 I'm thinking, kind of just where where mind is my mind is at. Um, I think I want to keep the general shape of everything that's that that's happening here. Like it seems like there's kind of like an indentation. Like around here, they have like almost like a like a, a, a white, a pure white raccoon. That's almost like yeah, eh? that that kind of looks like you know albino rocket. You know, if rocket was really really significantly vitamin D deprived, you know, he'd come out of a cave looking like this. There's, I mean, probably probably looking far worse to be honest. You know, this is a, a cuter version of that. But you, you see what I mean? Like the features are there, the pointy ears, the uh, everything's kind of based in triangles, it seems here. Everything's triangles, triangles, triangles. Triangles are pretty, pretty core, actually. Yeah. Um, for, for drawing, you'll see a lot of triangles. They're really great for building depth. Um, anyways. I think we'll build off of this. And I, 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 I do I want to keep the mouth where it's at? Or do I want to, you know what? You know what? I think everyone, people are going to probably hate me for this because I am absolutely no longer going to make this cat cute because what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the original snoot, little snoot here, and I'll kind of come back and I, I'm gonna keep going with this mouth. Like I feel like that looks like a a mustachio type of a thing there. Hmm. No, no. I kind of want to take the mouth all the way up. You know, almost, almost like if this cat was furry venomized. You know, if venom got his hands on this on this cat. No, no, I don't think it'd be, no, not exactly like that. Well, that could be really fun. That could be a fun idea. How about we do that? Hey, there you go. I think, I think I might, I think I might go with that idea. I think, I think I'm going to venomize this cat. <laughs> I, you know, hey, so earlier, um, I, I, yeah, as I was saying before, I Googled this image as an AI, cute AI or adorable AI cat or something. And this came up and yeah, legitimately, if this is someone else's cat, man, I am so sorry. I, I am sorry because we are going to take we I've, I've turned this into a collective journey folks this has now become a collective journey y'all are here so you are just as accountable as i, I am 
<laughs> for turning this cat. Uh, my gosh, you know what? But my okay, my my mind's kind of firing though too. I was I was really actually drawing blanks before, and now, now, now I, I'm uh, I I'm I'm getting some ideas now. Actually, I'm now getting into my zone. I I do really like. I I love actually. I really, really love combining mediums, and it's been a long time since I've done that. Usually, it's I, I love doing like venomizing thing as things, and I haven't venomized something in a long, long time. I may have drawings. Actually, I do. I, I might have some drawings on 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 here of me venomizing some stuff. Uh, so definitely, yeah, yeah. Check out some of my drawing videos. Um, if not, my gosh, I definitely need to upload some because I definitely have some that I need to post then. As I'm saying with this thing here, I think it would be great if I don't know if I want to make I I was originally gonna make its mouth kind of you know like like the atypical venom thing like that it's gonna like have a huge like a huge mouth like that kind of a thing. Um but I don't think I want to go with that. I think what I want to do is I'm gonna follow the majority of what they've provided here as far as like the cat like this the the shape i might maybe we'll bring it up there possibly but i'm 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 thinking i'm kind of thinking like i i might not actually show a lot of the mouth itself like there might be a little bit of there might be some gum action happening you know, like I think from here, it would be like this. So like there'd be like like that like they're the bag. You know, like how like sharks have. Sharks always have that weird protruding type of 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 jaw. Like their their gum line just it juts right out there. It's just it's it, it just right out there. That jaw that that jaw. <laughs> <laughs> that jaw is just right out there. But yeah, and it, I feel like there's something. I, oh, that was quite the whistle. I feel like there is something uh, uniquely about that uh, that makes sharks even more creepy. The, the way that their jaw kind of protrudes for you know for their 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 teeth to pop out. Like it's almost yeah. I don't know. It's it's it, it is definitely definitely creepy. Um, this is not the final thing i'm just this is kind of like we're we're doing some rough stuff we're doing some rough stuff right now as in like just rough drawing <laughs> i have a bit of a cold sorry if i sniffle a little i'm trying not to do that into the mic but also trying to be close to the mic so you guys can hear me because i don't know what I, i'm hoping that the gain's actually picking me up do you see what i'm saying here okay so like i'm just saying this is so this is the gum line Right. Right, and then to give that depth, to say like we'll go back to that uh, crazy blue, there's that blue, 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 blue. Where are you? There we go, blue. Okay. And to give that that sense of depth, that layering effect, right? Because if it's really easy to make, as as you can see here, this could this could just be a lip line. Like that could be like a clown face makeup, you know what I mean? It looks like it's it could be plastered on there. You have to start doing things to give it that sense of depth. They did that with the eyes, where you see that there's a bit more dark there, and how it's light and then dark. So that's how you know it's it's kind of curved. You know, it's going in. So as it's going in, it's going away from the light. So it's getting darker as it goes into these more protected areas, right? So we have to make those. <laughs> protected areas I, I don't know but this is one here so this would be the the original lip line let's get a bigger brush right so and it would go into there with some shading i probably should be just doing this with black at this point like it looks like i'm kind of sticking with this as it is i'm not this this is still just a rough just to give you guys an idea of what's in my head what I'm seeing in my head on this side, there's gonna be far more dark, like far more shading, right? Because the light is furthest away from here. It's furthest away actually right around the lip line. 
and then right at the very tip. But they're doing this interesting trick with the highlighting. So maybe we'll continue with that. And I'll put that on the teeth as well, I think. Because we want the teeth, you don't want the teeth to look like they're behind the gums, right? I mean, you know, teeth come out, they come out of the gums, right? So we have to play a little bit with the depth with that as well. And we have to give some things like that and that. Where the light is absolutely not hitting, right? That. There, underneath there for sure. Uh, yeah, up there. Okay. Um. Yeah. Shoot. I'm. I'm. I'm putting way more work into this. This. <laughs> this initial sketch. <laughs> uh. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um. Okay. Yeah, could you hear my mind like kind of working there for a second? I'm like, hey, should I keep going on this one or should I just like start doing a real thing? No, I'm, I'm still going to like just finish off just the basic idea of like where I kind of want to go with it just so you guys get an idea. Uh, let's do another layer. Now, this is the teeth, right? So for them to look like they're uh, coming out of the gums and not just underneath the gums, they have to be obviously overlapping it, right? So if we're putting a tooth here, see, I'm, I'm not going underneath that blue. Now these are just going to be looking like this for now. But see, I'm kind of, I'm putting it on top of everything. And also depending on how you, I guess, see the, the, the teeth, like you can make ones just kind of like that. Cause I mean, that's mean, I guess the point would be coming towards you. I think that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's kind of weird uh i'm gonna probably do a couple layered teeth to be honest i think i might like i like I like where this is going but i think i might do like a second layer of teeth i think that's even like kind of getting kind of creepier you know it's it's weird I'm getting this vibe of i don't it's been a while since i've watched some drawing streams it's um there's man what were they now, what were they called? What are they called? Drawfee? Drawfee? Like, it's a, it's like three or four. They're friends. They're, they're animators. They're drawers. They're, they're phenomenal. If you can find them, please uh, give them a follow. They, they, they do, they kind of, their whole channel is based off of mashing up art. Like, they kind of are thrown these curveball ideas and, I don't know if they draw, if, no, I don't think they draw live. I, I'm pretty sure they record their process and then they watch it all together, maybe live stream or, or something like that, or like have something like a chat. And, you know, then just comment on, on each other's artwork, you know, and like in the process and things like that. So I think you can kind of see where, where I'm kind of going with this, right? Cause I'm thinking this would be really, really cool if, if yeah, if this, if I went full out Venom with this, because it would start looking kind of like a Chihuahua, I think, at that point, to be honest. It is what it is, whatever. Because um, I think I also, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not completely done showing you guys what I want to do here. Because I love how the eyes already give. They're kind of, they're not, they're not totally Spider-Man, but they're, they're close. Like, they're, 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 they're sort of Spider-Man-y, you know, they're kind of, they have that really big, almost bug kind of shape. So I'm going to lean into that and I'm thinking, which layer am I on? See, I got to be careful. <laughs> I got to be careful. I got to do the right layers. Okay. This will be the outline layer. I'm thinking this could be, I th um, like, see, like this is where I'm looking at their natural outline for this eye. Like it does have, the shape is there. It's looking very Cheshire Cat now, actually, now that I'm, Oh man, it is totally looking like Cheshire Cat. That's not as fun. I'm still gonna keep going, but it kind of like, it does take a little bit of the, you know, the wind out of the sails when it's kind of like, oh man, this has already been kind of done. I'm not saying like everything has to be the first and I'm sure like it's, you know, 
other people's Cheshire cats don't look exactly like this, but I'm pretty damn sure they're going to look freaking close. Gosh, dang it. Oh, uh, well, I guess that's, oh, that, that looks no oh, oh, crooked eye. Well, hey, maybe not start of the <laughs> part of the uncomfortable, the uncanny valley effect that I'm trying to go for. The, the uglifying, is that a word? I don't know. There's beautifying. Is there uglifying? Because we are absolutely uglifying the hudge out of this kitty cat. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or this is like, like we're like Lilo and stitching up this cat. That's what, that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So this, that's, that's, that is. That is our plan. So I think, I think as far as like, I was going to, my, my, my plan was actually to start and finish a drawing on live stream. And we're 45 minutes in and I've done eyes and a rough sketch of a, <laughs> of a mouth. So, you know, achievable goals. Let's, let's maybe not go balls to the wall and say, let's not say things that we're not going to do, you know? Because that's that's just not good for everyone. That's not good for anyone. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just just gonna try and fit within my wheelhouse. I'm I'm not done uh, at uh, on any level though right now. I do want to actually. I want to make a little bit of progress with this. To be honest, I want to kind of go somewhere with this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like. It might be kind of. I'm thinking like see it like the tail. I think that'll be kind of interesting if. What if the the tongue was kind of like wrapped around itself a, a couple times, like like you know, almost like spindly out, like tentacly, like following the, all these lines here, and then maybe follows along its back, and that's its tail, like its actual tail, is just this massive, tentacly gross tongue. Oh man, you know what? I'm kind of. I think I might actually keep my sketch and I think I might make it work. I might make it work, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm going to see if the, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to I'm going to try doing some tricks here. Uh, first, let's take the saturation out. Oh, that's helping. There we go. There. Okay. Oh, okay. I am happy already with that. I think I'm just going to take off these these tracers for the eyes though. Cuz I, I I mean I might do the exact I might do that exactly as is or I just kind of might I have another idea for the eyes that I am a little bit more excited about. Because that's one other thing too. I don't know if you're if I don't know if anyone watching this is a fan of Venom or the Venomverse or Marvel in, in its entirety. But you know, like Venom lately, just like most '90s things, is 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 hot. It's on trend. He's pretty popular again. I've always been a huge, huge, huge Venom fan. Um, but everyone's been Venomized at this point. Uh, there's like a Venom version of every every character. Um, I, you know what, that might be the Venom drawing that I have on mine. It's like I did a Venom combined with, or kind of like Carnage, a Venom Joker spawn. And it was like kind of in the style of, of Todd McFarlane. And the cool thing is like when I posted it, this is a long time ago, the, the OG one I posted on my Instagram. And when I posted it, it was kind of cool because it was picked up by, uh, I think it was like his fan site. Like that he ran or something and and it was posted on there so that was really really cool like you know to kind of get get the thumbs up from uh from you know tom mcfarlane wow man talking 90s art 90s comic art yeah yeah hell yeah okay so i like where this is going uh let's let's i'm gonna sharpen up these teeth you know while i was prepping for this uh as all responsible streamers should be doing <laughs> uh i 
you know, that's when I was kind of, you know, thinking like, oh yeah, should I have music playing? Should I, you know, just all, all these, just things to contemplate or, or, or prepare for, or uh, things I was wondering if, if that would enhance the view, you know, the viewer experience or whatever, right? That kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm one of those artists who actually, I don't usually listen to music. And that's another reason why I chose not to play music is oddly music I find distracting. Um, and, and I say oddly because I don't get distracted. If not, I prefer to have some type of like a movie or a TV show going. And I do not, I find it distracting up until the way of the, like, I'll, I will look at a, you know, or listen to it a little bit, but it doesn't keep me from doing what I'm doing. But for some reason, music, it will. Like music will completely distract me. Um, yeah, okay, I like that. I think what I'm also gonna do, another thing that um, I've, I've, I've learned in my travels of, of experimenting with drawing and doing uh, comic book art and replicating so many different uh, uh, comic art styles is really learning that um, great artists, they make you think, think that you're seeing something when you're not. And what, what I mean is like, especially color, like really, really good artists. You, you, they, and, and, and I even knew that and I still, kept kept falling for it kept on falling for it what i mean is say like this this smile here right the teeth they're all white right um that's great but it's also it's really flat you know it's very one-dimensional that's why even in their original drawing they do have white even though they are acknowledging that the, that the light is behind the subject they are putting the the white behind right and they still gave it little dots on the eyes to give that depth with eye, with um, teeth, even with really, really white, shiny, pearly, usually like, you know, like when they're going, especially like, um, uh, actually, you know, it's either way. It's even, like, I was gonna say like with those predator sharp teeth, but yeah, it's like predator sharp teeth, but even people have like really nice glistening smiles. It looks like their teeth are all white and they're not, they're using um, a bunch of different, not just derivatives of white, but usually a lot of off whites and beige and brown. And just that the complex use of that that color palette gives you the idea of that these are beautiful, bright, shiny teeth. One uh, one really good example of that um, is anyone who's ever tried to create gold, and you know, like not as in the uh, alchem alchemist kind of like way. You know, if if you're doing that. Uh, Welcome to the year 2000. <laughs> uh, no, like if you're drawing gold, uh, it's not just, well, that's the complexity of it, right? Like it's not, a, it's reflective, right? First and foremost, it's, it's reflective. And so a lot of its color comes from whatever is reflecting off of it. And I don't mean the light. I mean, whatever's around it that's affecting the reflection. So then the color seems that that color. Uh, so when you're drawing something that's gold, you're gonna be using just like this eye here, you're gonna be using like browns, yellows, uh, bright oranges, whites. Uh, you might actually get yeah, um, even, even like uh, army green, like a, a military, like a puke green kind of a thing go, going on like that those for sure too. It's really, really interesting. Like um, one thing that helped me understand, uh, cause I, I don't, I don't have like that, that professional drawing background that many animators and artists have had. I, I don't know, no, I, I don't know what I'm, accent I'm emulating. If, something that I, my idea of what re refined is and educated. So if you're insulted, I'm sorry, but uh, that's me saying that you're educated and <laughs> Like that's my imitation of someone sounding really, really intelligent and uh, not like me. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't 
I don't have a lot of those super core fundamentals or I, you know, I wasn't taught those core fundamentals, especially when it comes to digital art. Um, when you're talking about color theory, um, uh, yeah, like, and so one thing I've used it to, to get past, I'm going to say get past that to, to learn, uh, to learn about that is I just, I explore with color wheels a lot. Um, so what I mean is like, if you ever experiment with photos and when you hit the edit photo and then it gives you saturation and hue, the hue is something I like to play with. Sometimes like in a lot of apps like this one here, I think they do like, yeah, see so like they do that, but they also do here. Let's, um, let's make a double of the mouth and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I go here, now I'm just affecting this layer here that has the gum line, right? But if we go to the hue, you can just change the actual color isolated just to that area. So what I mean was when I play with hue, um, when I play with the hue, <laughs> when I play with hue, <laughs> hue, hue and I, we go, we go all the way back. We go so back. He's me and Hugh. <laughs> okay, so when I say like I like to play around with the Hugh is um, so in pictures like this. It is just experimenting. So this looks like in general this is a warm-ish light. It's not. It doesn't look like it's a cool a cold light or a cool light because there is a slight, slight yellowy, goldy color to the white out there that I don't believe is part of the fur color. Um, so when you're experimenting with with using the hue, for me at least, it's a great place to start learning about what type of color, what type of colored light exists in that room and how can I just easily change that? And this is one of the easiest ways is by experimenting with the hue. Uh, so this being more of a warm colored room, we're gonna go with more I would say about there. Yeah, yeah. I might, I might actually bring out the saturation a bit more. Let's make it a tad bit more punchy. Yes. So what I meant is I'm going to make these teeth, even though I started off with white in my initial, you know, explanation of what I was drawing here. Uh, as my base, as my base color. I'm going to change them to, where am I at here? What is this one? Uh, I'm going to change them to uh, probably beige, maybe brown even. Uh, and what I mean base color is, um, I'm, I'm hoping I'm using a lot of terms correct. Uh, I've, I've never really explained in my drawing before. Uh, I, I build. Um, when I think of drawing, I'm, I like to layer. So I like to build on my drawings. And I always start with a base color. And to me, usually, usually, excluding the shading, the base color for me is usually the darkest color. And then I work my way brighter. I, I, I add brighter layers on top of on top of what's happening. So what I mean is with these teeth already white. I want my want to make my base color darker. So I'm going to isolate them. They're already isolated. Perfect. Great. And let's go to well, let's go to this one here. And I don't know how much hue I can add to them because they're white. So there's not much of a hue that you can do to oh, well, but it's t it's letting me. It's definitely letting me. Okay, I'm going to go to this side here. I think a bit of a a bit of a brownie kind of a look there. I think that looks kind of nice. Well, when I say nice, I mean there let's bring the saturation a bit there we go make it just a bit dark yeah it's gross perfect and also so the reason why or at least for myself um the reason why i i i believe in doing this type of a layering effect uh is this is what for me achieves depth if 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 you go in, go in hard with just using the one color, or if you use 
say if I just used really soft, like it was like a, a, a white tooth and just use black as shading, yeah, it, it would still sort of give off that effect, um, but it would look unrealistic. It, it would look like gleaming white teeth. So it would look very, I guess, you know what? It would look great for, for something that exists in this thing's world. Very pure. Everything is very kind of solid colors. There is no, there's no plaque or decay. Um, yeah, you know, like, so for reality's sake, you know, you want some, some more vibrant, some warm colors in the teeth specifically. Um, I mean, obviously, peel back the 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 more the more attractive you want the teeth, you know, peel that back a bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now another thing we're going to be doing, or one thing I'm, I'm going to be doing, is it, I like to use the alpha lock a lot as well. It's something I'm pretty new to using. When I say new, as in new, I. I it's it's not really something I explored earlier on when I started first getting involved in in digital drawing and I really don't know why I didn't um, what the alpha lock helps you do is you get to isolate um, a specific layer and sure you're you're already doing that when you're when you've chosen a layer and then you're and then you're drawing um, but with the alpha lock you affect only that thing. So what I mean is, here, let's take our experimental smile here. Do I have one cell? No, I don't. Let's do this one. Okay. Okay, so this smile, these, this gum line, this extra gum line there, right? Now, I've highlighted that layer. Have I? Which one have I highlighted? Yeah, great. Let's put it up here so we know. <laughs> Let's make sure we know what we're actually uh, drawing on. So now if I use any type of paintbrush on this layer, I have the purple selected, right? It goes all over the place. That's like a normal layer, right? Now if I take that off, and now if we choose oops, alpha lock, now it will only let me apply my paint where there's already paint on that layer. Now remember, I've chosen a layer that has only this. So if this works properly, then this blue purple color should only be affecting that red line, no matter where I go with this. So I'll start off a little bit here. See, it's making it nice and blue. But if I go off, see, I'm going all the way. Let's see, it's only, it's only affecting that that it's like it's not going off right it's not going into this other area it's just affecting the red line so that that makes um using the alpha lock is man it does make drawing a lot easier i will say like it it, it helps you with like i said like just isolating things oops let me get that it helps you isolate you know what i'm picking all the wrong layers right now <laughs> See, see, this is why you don't talk while you draw. This is why multitasking does not exist. <laughs> Ali Abdal, come at me. I, yeah, I, I, I do not believe in multitasking. I don't. I truly don't. Unfortunately, I, I really believe that if you give, if you're doing two things, then at best, at best, those two things are getting fifty percent of your, of your attention. If I'm doing something. I really, really want to try to give it my 100% attention. I, I want to try. It doesn't always happen, that's for dang sure. I try, I want to try. Okay, I, yeah, okay, there we go. So I'm just going to get rid of this purple outline underneath. We're going to remake it anyways. It's going to, it's going to be a, um, well, it's going to be within the color spectrum of what's actually being used there because the purple, would not make sense but there we go things are kind of there this is this is what i was kind of initially thinking this initially no sorry this is what i was thinking when we started cheshire venomizing this cat yeah 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 okay let's duplicate the teeth 
on these, uh, we will make a little brighter. We'll see how they pop like that, right? But now what I want to do is to give them some depth is I'm going to erase this layer where there's no light, right? So I'm thinking if, if I leave this area here still highlighted, like these tips in a row, it'll basically make it look like the, like the teeth are, are, are kind of popping rather than going flat or receding, right? Because the light is still basically coming from this side. So if you make, if you make the, the teeth darker from here and continue darker, that means they've never, they're never really seeing the light, right? That means they're curving this way. But if you put some light, just actually, even if you look at my, my, my fingers, I don't know how, how the light's kind of like hitting it, right? How this light here, if you made it totally, totally flat, I mean, you can't really see it like that, right? Like totally flat, then you just see that one color, but then you go like this, you know, now you can see that there's like, brown and, and yellow that gives you the detail right where the lights hitting and where the lights avoiding so we want to kind of achieve that on the teeth and we have to do that on this side on the underside the tip and a little bit here because this lip this lip here we're going to enhance that but the lip is going to be blocking some of this light so i want it to be blocking some of the light on there and that's where that's where the alpha, the alpha lock comes into super, super handy when you're just trying to apply um, paint to a specific color, like to, to a specific layer. You just don't want, don't want to go all over the place. I'm going to take away a lot of this purple now that I'm kind of like, you know, either that or maybe I should just turn it totally black at this point. I'm thinking like, um, I'm at the point where I've kind of merged most of my draft art <laughs> into the workable model. So uh, that's not usually what I do. Um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to erase some of the bright, bright white on this side. Seeing that, I get that automatically tells you right, that the side of the teeth, they're not seeing the light. They are not seeing any of that light. We have to make sure that we stay true to where the light source is. Everything has to kind of still come back to, to, to this side over here, right? If I start going like this, it's not gonna make too much sense. I guess maybe the light is kind of sort of over here. Yeah, the lights, okay, so we could do that. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. What I was just saying is that like, you know, you just want to make sure that what it, wherever you're adding shading or wherever you're taking out light, that that's, that's where it makes sense to take it out. There's a lot of times, and I mean, we started this drawing with a prime example of that. There's so many times where shading and lighting is added to places purely for the sake of just, you know, making something look better, you know. Better. Sorry, I don't really know where the camera is at this point. Better. <laughs> um, and uh, and that's that's fine. I mean, because you know, like there's there's a place for for marketing and advertising art, and that's primarily where that that exists in is things that are unrealistic, that are unattainable, that don't exist in reality. They're hyperized in order to hyperize that word. I don't know. They're hyperized it to you know to to get you to. Get you to want it, get you to buy, 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 buy it now, buy it now, right? Okay, so now as we're getting closer to the light source, I'm not going to be adding the same type of, right? Because I'm not going to be taking off the tips anymore because the light's actually hitting this, this area. So now slowly, slowly, the shading is more now coming over to, to, to my left-hand side of the teeth, it might be your right-hand side. I still haven't figured that out. We'll find out after the stream. Uh, maybe I'll watch it. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll edit this. Maybe I'll cut this up into amazingly edited works of art that will absolutely not get you know trolled on and people won't say horrible things. <laughs> 
Oh, internet. Oh, internet. How we never love you, but we just need you. <laughs> okay. So now I'm applying a bit of a bit of shading. I'm taking away light right at the tip now of the teeth. I'm whispering a lot. This is not meant to be an ASMR thing. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely not. I have nothing against ASMR. And I think that I uh, I subscribe to a couple and I like that. Uh, I think that there has to, there's a certain level of confidence in, not how you sound specifically, but I guess like you got to be making sure that people are not liking that sound experience. Oh shoot! Okay, there we go. <laughs> I started. See, I started doing it myself. I started looking at this just aesthetically. I'm like, oh, it looked nice. My my hand just started erasing where I I should not be erasing. Uh, okay. There we go. Actually, you know, what? I'm going to be putting more light onto. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. If anything, let's. I'm going to build a little bit more white onto these. You know, maybe at a, you know, on a future stream, as we continue to work on this, maybe we'll put music on. I don't know. Um, I usually like watching, um, I like learning stuff, like odd stuff. So I usually like seeing what's, what's going on like internet news or I don't know. Like, I can't believe that I'm saying, but I, I got, oh man, I get sucked into the drama. Like some of the YouTuber drama and streaming drama, like I, I find some of it interesting. I find it, I find it interesting. It's weird. Cause I don't like, I don't like reality TV. And I think it's because the fabrication of reality TV, whereas like drama with, with like, with YouTubers uh, and, and, you know, Twitch streamers, like, it's a it's like unfortunately a bit more real you know it's it's more real in all the absolutely horrible ways and man is it fascinating and it's amazing <laughs> it's so so amazing um it's just interesting like uh it's interesting that we're in this media of media creation anyone i mean this is an example of it anyone can just turn on their phone and be part or you know um try go after the 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 dream of or or want to be part of, of a bigger community of, of a bigger discussion and before it took having to you know get through networks and things like that whereas now you have the ability to you know put your ideas and your passions your feelings uh out into the ethos and if not, if not find a community, then sometimes even like be lucky enough to create one. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. Like, and so we're we're kind of experiencing that right, right now, like with with YouTube. Like, we are lucky enough to be part of the generations that are allowed to not just project their consciousness and their thoughts and and all that, and, and you know, into into the ether, but they're also going to be part of the first rung of people who are kind of like digitally immortalized is that weird it's kind of weird right like i don't know that, that there must have been a discussion like a long long time ago when tv and movies first started really being made it's like the the first idea of like when the first run or first like generation of of like film actors started to pass you know and it's like whoa but we could still see them in these movies. Like they still live on in this thing, you know, there's a certain level of like, I don't know, continuity with having some kind of visual presence. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. I gotta say. Anyhow, 
drawing. <laughs> oh man. Okay. 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 Uh, let's let's delete that layer. This one, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to commit. I'm committing, guys. I'm pulling the trigger. It's going to we're going to take out all the satch. Oh my goodness gracious, that just looks not good. Well, here, let's. Let's lighten it up a little. I'm going to make it look a little more transparent. Maybe not. Well, I'll help out. There we go. Oh, look at that cute kitty. Kitty, kitty. Look at the cute kitty. We're getting there. Hey, we're, we are absolutely getting there. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work on the gums. And also, I want to clean up this line. Like, it looks very cartoony because of how heavy that line is. It looks like an outline. It looks like an outline. And we do not, do not want that, ladies and gentlemen. We do not want that. Okay, here we go. Let's erase that just a bit. Let's look and establish that. Uh, I used words that I don't remember what the word was I was using before, you know? Um, <laughs> the uh, These lines of depth you know, at some point, you know, I guess I will listen to this and I'll, and I'll, and I'll edit this. And um, for everyone who watches the edited version, well, hey, I'm going to probably sound really smart. And for the people who are unfortunate enough to view the live, I'm going to look really dumb. And that is just what... <laughs> Because <laughs> also, I am not Googling anything or fact-checking myself while we're doing this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to draw. I'm here to draw. And uh, I will, for anything I say incorrect, I'm definitely going to try and catch that and put that into the, you know, correct that for the, for the recorded, the edited stuffs. But, you know... Maybe that's the, is that the appeal of a live? You get to see people make mistakes. <laughs> make a mistakes? You get to see people make mistakes uh, that you wouldn't normally because they get to edit that bejesus out of those videos. We only get to, we only show you what we want you to see. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm feeling a little better with that. I still don't like that it's, um, black uh that's fine we'll fix that right now right now I'm about cleaning cleaning stuff up so we go layer by layer getting rid of getting rid of gum lines where there should not be gum lines okay the responsible me should stop this and get back to work like not this work, but I like I actually have work work that I'm supposed to be doing as well. Well, not supposed to be doing. Well, it's supposed to be done. But, but you know what? You know what? That's another story. It's it's for for another day. Yes, I mean if you really want to know what I actually do for my day job, it's it's in the, it's in the details and the thing. I, I don't know how to talk about that kind of stuff. Now. <laughs> we don't have to get into that. Nor should I be using that voice right now. That is my work voice. Right now, I get to use my real voice. Okay. Kitty, kitty. Pet the kitty. Pet the kitty. Pet the kitty. <laughs> Pet the kitty. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go with... Yeah, we're going to move the light. Now this layer. Here, we're going to merge those. So this is going to be on the gums. And let's go with pink, pinky white kind of color. I think something like that. There we go. And I will use. Uh, actually, see, that's that's where the decision comes in. There probably is a function for this, and I don't know how to do it. And I'm sure I've Googled it. And I'm sure I've even watched people do videos on it. And I'm sure that I even applied it once or twice while watching them in order to remember. I have no idea. So what I'm saying is I have no idea how to um, 
add highlighting to this, uh, ooh, shoot, like isolate, basically isolate this gum line and draw on it without it being a destructive thing. What I mean by destructive is like when, when you're drawing on layers, you're, you're altering that layer, you know, it's, 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 it's it is destroyed. It's like, it still exists, but you know, it's not, it's no longer, it's no longer in a retrievable way, you know, or a retrievable form. You've gone now in a path and you, you can, you can undo, but it's no longer like a, a an unedited layer. You know what I mean? You've permanently changed it. So what I mean is I, I don't know how to create a layer that shows where I want to highlight and it's, and I only want to draw where this orange is, but I don't want to draw on that layer. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I was saying before, how if I pick that layer and did an alpha lock, I could draw right across and it only hits that, right? I want to do that, be able to do that without actually drawing on that layer. You know what I mean? I'm sure that's a function. I'm so sure that's a function. And I'm, and I'm so sure that I could probably Google that and watch right now how to do that. And, you know, the thing is, I find it way easier. <laughs> you know, not way easier. I shouldn't say that. I, I, I am of the mindset. I'm just the kind of person that I have to be really driven. Something has to really stump me. And I have to really want to know how to do it that way in order for me to like, okay, I better Google this. I better yada yada. I usually like to kind of figure out my own way. I kind of like to um, kind of just fudge my own way there, you know, or, or figure out my own way of doing it. I kind of like that too. There is a certain, uh, not just pride, but you know, if you figure out how to do it like from, from scratch or, or, or like a, a much more manual way, rather than applying a filter here or um, then I think that you kind of understand color and depth a bit better. And then you're not just dependent on th that application, you know, or that, that function, you know, how that, that function applies these, these colors and lights and, and your shading, you understand it enough that if that, functionality wasn't there you could just do it yourself it would take a lot of time a lot of time but in some cases it's worth doing so this is a tangent i'm using new ish headphones that's kind of looking gum line ish right you know i've been kind of like working on the the whites just trying to give it that highlight see that like see that does so much right like that's what we started with flat two-dimensional it had a little bit of depth because like what we we're saying with with the shading but then once you start like putting in a little bit of white and see that the, the it's the erratic thing i'm still using just the the airbrush i've been using the airbrush almost for this whole entire drawing probably have used it for the whole drawing so you can do like really nice soft lines and then just a couple harder little taps and when you interweave it with the darker oranges and pinks you yeah you start to get a very wet looking gum line you know and we've only we've only like worked with like two three colors and also i've been talking a lot and not doing uh really anything <laughs> <laughs> so where i'm going with that is what i mean is like so someone who was actually incredibly paying attention to what they're doing and this was what they were drawing with intent um whether you had like you know a, a filter or like you can easily, you can easily do this. It's all about like experimenting. And this is the nice thing about experimenting with a, a tablet is that it's such low, low risk. What I mean is that like, you're not destroying paper. I mean, I guess there's the energy for charging the device, but outside of that, you know, you're not really, you're not, you're not destroying anything. You are losing, I don't want to say, okay, I was going to say, you're losing time, but I mean, it's, it's an investment. It's something you're interested in doing. You know, you want to get better at it. Yeah. 
I mean, there's definitely going to school for sure. Hey, man. Education. And I'm not saying that with, oh my gosh, that sounds very um, condescending. And and it absolutely was. If you're educated, then you can go yourself. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> absolutely educate yourself. You know, if that's a, if that is an option, if you can educate yourself within the regards of what you're passionate about, yeah, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so now I'm I'm gingerly delete, deleting. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you t like I work in an editing world, so like you know, the erasing and 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 deleting are unfortunately words that are very both commonly used in my daily lexicon. Uh, I'm going to just delete my lunch right now, you know? <laughs> Sorry, you're going to throw the trash? I don't know. That's very dumb. What's he talking about? Okay, just carefully taking out some of the dark lines. I'm keeping a little bit of it just for that sake of like I said, the depth, right? Like this is going a little further back and I still want to give the illusion. Um, yeah, of like, you know, like what's further back and what's what's closer up and that also comes with, um, I will say actually that comes a bit more with using like any kind of blur effects. So like if you do photos or doing editing and you use like Gaussian blurs and things like that. Um, I'll, I'll actually show you something else I did with this preemptively when I prepped this cat photo for today's stream. I didn't know what, what I was going to go with it. Like, you know what I mean? Like I didn't, I just wanted this to be very exploratory and I just wanted to kind of to see where it was going to end up going. Um, one thing I did is I made this cat into a transparent ping image. Um, I, just, just in case if I wanted to isolate it against its background, um, here, I'll show you. So that there it is right there. Like there's a, you can't really tell cause it, I mean, I guess you can sort of like see a little quiver. I guess I didn't size it perfectly. It's close enough, but let's see like a little change of shape there. Yeah. So basically what I did is. This is now the original drawing, this one right here. This is the, or one image. The cat is part of the background in this in this image. Whereas in this one, if I delete, or if I make that transparent, oh God, there. So there is, I, I, I turned the cat into a ping, I don't know, into a transparent ping image. Um, I find this really beneficial for, specifically for these type of drawings. Uh, there's a really, really quick way of doing this, and I've fallen in love with doing that. And now that's the only way I, I will make images trans or make transparencies. Um, now, first, the okay, first the, the way I do it actually, I just do it on my iPhone. So I I don't know how far back as far as like which iOS update, but there is at some point where they introduced the function where if you get a picture or a photo or an image and you press and hold. Um, you can separate the fore image from the background. It sometimes gets it right, sometimes it gets it wrong. It's it, it is kind of a hit or miss thing. So it's not always going to get it right. Sometimes it does. This one got pretty good. And I find that really great when you want to isolate your foreground from your background. Right away, you can create depth by doing something like that. So just for for example, here let's I'm going to take off all these layers that we were drawing on. Just bring back Kitty. Okay, right? So now all I have right now are my two layers, the cat here and the cat on the background. Now they've already done this where one thing that they've done is like when you're looking at a photo, the photo will autofocus and whatever's in focus will be nice and sharp and whatever's out of focus will be blurred out, right? And we try and achieve that, we try and achieve that a lot with, you know, apps and stuff where it, it, it will automatically or you can place where the central focus point is and it blurs everything out from there. Now what this function will do, it'll do it a bit because it's already blurred out, but what I can just show you, for example, is I'm gonna 
now keep the cat completely on its own. I'm not going to affect it. But the image that has the background, I'm going to blur that out, right? Because that's what's technically out of focus. The cat's in focus. The background is out of focus. So if you're ever doing any kind of drawing or artwork where you want to force a sense of perspective and you want to force um, people to look somewhere, the eyes, if you want to guide them somewhere, that's an automatic way. The eyes will always go to where, where there's more detail. They want to take in the detail. So if you automatically blur everything or blur everything around what has the major detail, that's where the eyes are going to go to. Go to. So let's blur this layer out. See? Just isolate that and blur. I mean, it did not look good at all. <laughs> you, you don't want to go crazy with it. Right, right now it's at zero. And then like that, it just looks like a blown out piece of trash. So you don't want to do that. You can find the, the sweet spot. I would even say like it's kind of already getting there. Oh, kind of like that looks really nice actually. I like how the it took the tail. It so when I when I took this image and made it into a, a transparent ping, it didn't include the tail. And at first I was angry about that, but it makes way more sense. If anything, I would have been okay with it taking off the tail and this because technically the focal point is this, right? It's just the it's it's just the, the cat. It's just the cat's front there, not not the legs, not so all that should technically be a little blurred out. So we blow it out just a bit, but not, not major. I think that's really nice. Oh, I think that's really nice. I like that. I like that, and at the same time, I'm not going to keep this because this, yeah, this doesn't. Uh, <laughs> this does not go with what I'm trying to do with this cat drawing yet. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. You know, like I, I think that. Uh, you know, we've given it some nice so progress report. What we've done so far, right? We've given it some nice eyes, some cute kitty eyes. Went from black to bam. Okay, I like that. Okay, and we given kitty has a nice lobbery smile. Look at that derp, beautiful derp, and gums sticking out, teeth. And then we gave a little bit of depth to some of the gums there so far. You know what I'll do is um, I think I'm going to finish off this gum line. And uh, see what we're feeling. I, I check back in, but I don't, uh, I think for further, I think that, you know, like let's set that as a, as a goal for today's, for today's stream. I think just, whoop, that was a little too heavy handed there. I do think actually this is darker. There we go. So the tooth over here can't just be hanging out of nowhere. Everything has to connect, right? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. You know, I think that's been my goal actually when it comes to like when I do fusion art with like cartoons and comics. It's not so much that I concentrate on the fusion aspect. I really try and make it just make sense. I try my best to just make the work look like it makes sense. If it existed in this reality, how would the light hit? You know, how would it actually look? Now, even though I did say like I'm only going to take out the, the black where there's not going to be any shading. Um, I'm going to replace this with a different color because also it, you know, just as we're seeing in the eyes here where it gets darker, it's not necessarily black. It's a darker blue or darker teal or whatever color YouTube is, is telling you that is. I'm going to replace though most of this black with um, probably like tones of purple and burgundy burgundy purple like those are actually a lot of the color tones i use for for blood but i find uh specifically for um teeth and smiles or teeth and smiles teeth and specifically creepy you know monster 
certain type of things that have a creep factor. You know, if you if you just don't want to look cute or or attractive, you know, go with go with cooler cooler red tones. If that makes sense. Go with the pinks. Go with pinks, light pinks like these, like like peach kind of peachy pink color. They're not nice, soft, more pastel-y. But once you're getting into um, creatures or things that people should fear, well, it's not fear, but you know what I mean, like sharp teeth, carnivores. Um, that's when you should uh, use warmer tones of red. And I would even say like experimenting with yellows and greens with the reds gives it a really, really creepy look. Um, I don't know what it is. And I've only seen some artists use that, at least in a way that I really picked up on. Um, you'll usually see that a lot with artists who have drawn the Predator series. And it's not just be, I mean, maybe, oh shoot. It's not just because it's a, um, like the, the Predators have like not a human, human skin tones. They, they also, well, the, you know, their blood is green. So like their flesh wounds tend to have like this, what we would kind of associate as like, almost like decaying, you know, meat kind of a look. That's what their like healthy look almost looks like, you know, like the, the gashes and the wounds. And, you know, I, I imagine there's some kind of scientific uh, explanation for what types of, they, they, you know, they probably aren't like, I guess they're carbon based, but maybe they don't use like oxygen. Maybe they're nitrogen based. So then their blood isn't red. It's a, a different color. I, I don't know. Maybe it's copper based because it's green. Uh, but anyways, where I'm going with that is that like by adding colors that, that we don't innately um, correlate to human physiology, like the reds and the pinks and, and things like that, when you start using greens and yellows, not only are you going to this really foreign kind of like bug, like insect, other, other animal that, you know, unfamiliar animal type of tissue. Look, you're also getting to like that. Yeah. Is this decaying? Is it, is it is off? You know what I mean? Like, so it, it automatically adds that kind of just gross, a bit of a gross factor and even like a bit of a, a gore, a gore aspect to it as well. Uh, like as in what has this thing been feasting on, you know? Oops. That is no bueno. Okay. That. Hey, man. Hey. 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 Hey, kitty. Hey, kitty. <laughs> hey, kitty. This kitty is looking... Pretty ready to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's 10 o'clock here, guys. My imagination is, is purely devoted to, to drawing this. My wordology. <laughs> My wordology is out. Okay, here we go. I think it has whiskers coming out this way. That's, that's Adam. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I think I said earlier that uh, I had, these are brand new headphones. Um, they're not highly recommended. I had an adventure with them. Maybe I will talk about that on a future stream. An adventure in receiving them initially and with use. Uh, they usually work really well. They work well for like a lot of normal things, I guess, like listening to regular media and stuff that they've, 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 yeah, they've been great. But anytime I need to listen to my, myself, it might be just plugging into my microphone possibly, but I get, man, it's the second one. I get such a bad buzzing, a bad buzzing on the left-hand side and 
I've already talked to customer service, but you know, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying anything bad about customer service. My gosh, that's been half my life. That has been half my life. Waiting on phones for, with customer service has been half my life. No, it's no, no. I, I've been working customer service for, I've worked in customer service a lot. I get it. I get the grind and what a grind it is, folks. Here we go. Okay, so I think I'm gonna add that, this, the white the highlights, and then we might call this a day. Well, dang, you know, and then my, my OCD kicks in and it's like, you know, but if you just put in a bit more, you're not exactly tired yet. And you, you know, my my OCD is right. Right, I'm not tired. But I also don't want to go totally ham on this. I don't want to start making not silly mistakes. I'm not going to be making mistakes or anything. Something I need to get, uh, undo. But I'm kind of glad with this. This is kind of cool. Like you know, I first a haven't really put out a video in gosh. I don't know, four months. It's been a while. It's been it's been a it's been a it's been a while, and and I was kind of feeling like I you know like wh what's going not what's going to work. You know what do people want to see? What do people want to see that I like to create? You know, and I know it ebbs and flows. It's not the algorithm. It's it's it is never the algorithm. Anyone who blames anything on the algorithm, they're just not willing to change it up. You know. It's you just got to work on whatever you're doing, or I don't know, just like what you're doing. If you're just enjoyed it, if you're invested in the process, it don't matter. It don't matter. You know how I know that? Do you know how I know that? To all the people in the room, to all the people in the room, do you know how I know that? To the zero people in the room, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm gonna edit this out or not edit this out. I'm gonna edit this, and and I'm fully aware. Uh, yeah, like I've I actually haven't had a single person come in uh, on my stream, and that's that is totally okay. That's a hundred percent okay. Um, it's for whoever can, whoever, you know, whoever's interested, whoever can, whoever the whoever this will you know be shared to. That's another thing. You know, I think un until you hit like a couple thousand or a thousand subscribers, YouTube throttles your your exposure. So what I mean is, I have about two hundred thirteen fabulous subscribers. Um, so anytime I do a stream, they will know, and then fifty other people, randomly fifty other people, it like it will go on to their um, discover page. Fifty out of the you know millions. Um, it, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. And that, that's okay. That's just how they make sure that the people who are doing it, who are streaming are people who genuinely want to be doing it. Okay. Okay. I'm liking this. I am not done. I am going to actually add just a tad more. Shoot. I'm going to add some trading. I just, I just, I need to, I just need to, and we'll do it on this layer. We're going to do on the black layer okay so this is the color that's kind of more wine to use for my shading and with it being brown a compliment well i'm gonna say compliment but it doesn't it doesn't contrast so heavily against the red and the pink so it's a nice a nice blending color so if you want to shade if you want to shade if I get good at shading, you know, get good at understanding colors. Because shading isn't just about, you know, adding white and, or, you know, like the light or white and, and black. It's uh, understanding the whole color spectrum of the area that you're trying to shade. I mean, if you're just if you're doing black and white shading, then, you know, black and white photos, and hey, cool. And that is what it is, I guess. Okay, so for this, you'll notice that like I'm actually doing some uh, the darker 
right around the teeth because right away it gives it makes the, to the edge of the tooth and the pooth edge of the tooth pop a little and that is where the light would not be right because that would be an indentation just like this just like where the it's like a socket right so the light's not really going to go there so you want to enhance that a little and I would say, like, you can start angling it a little, too, because remember, the light is coming from this side, right? So this color is going to be on this side of the white. It's going to be the opposite, right? Everything works in, like, balance, opposites, whenever you're dealing with shading, right? The shade is on the opposite side of where the light is. Okay. What would a drawing ASMR video B. I have no idea what that would be. I'm only asking because I find myself whispering a lot when I'm drawing and I don't know why. I'm not liking some of this. There, that's better. Um, maybe be like the scratching or the tapping of the, the utensil maybe I suppose. Okay, so here we can add some. There we go. Now it's getting interesting. Now this looks like it belongs. Well, I was going to say it looks like it belongs. Uh, no, not at all. This does not belong on this animal nor any other animal. I mean, as in, it's starting to blend. That's starting to look like part of the drawing. And that's, that's the point of this, right? At least for me, I don't know. What's the definition of redrawing? I think that's, that's my definition of redrawing. I like to like redraw something that already exists and... I like to try and make it look different, very different. Uh, different in the way of like a different concept or a different thing that exists in that world. But I don't like to change the world that that drawing exists in. Does that make sense? So I guess I mean, I want to, whatever this, wherever this drawing goes, or if we're going to venomize it, Cheshire Cat it, whatever we end up doing with this drawing, it will be the end result, whatever it may end up being, is going to be something that belongs in the world, visu visibly, in the world that this thing came from. You know what I mean? It works with the same lighting mechanics of that universe. So, so like this, it completely breaks the laws of physics and light can come from anywhere, basically. I, tr I will absolutely try not to let that happen. Which might be a little bit more true to uh, what I think it should be. There we go. See, by having a little bit of highlight there, you can tell that the lip is kind of like stopping. Now, the only way for me to, to to absolutely finish that that detail, so then you really know that that shadow is being caused by the lip, is. This is not going to be a permanent line. I'm not going to do this now because we're nowhere near there. But let's get, I would say, a bright white. And that layer. Oh, that one. And wherever that shadow or that light is, the shadow is, sorry, I want to be putting a highlight. Right? Because that's what's blocking. That's what's creating this dark line there, right? It's going to be pretty sharp. It's going to be a little sharp because it has to be catching. Like, literally, that's where the light is ending. The light is not going past that. So that would be catching the most of it. So I think there would probably be a sharper line in there. Maybe a couple, like... Maybe a couple of wrinklies, you know, as we develop the lip line. But it would be something sort of like that. I mean, I'm not really happy with it. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Look like that. Kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, see? There we go. Oh my gosh. I am happy with this. Uh, this seems like I, I intended this on being a one-stop shop that I just started drawing and finishing it but it looks like it looks like we got the beginnings of a series all right 
All right, everybody in the house. Yeah, yeah. All zero people in the house who are here to watch me draw. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, this has been great. Uh, it's been really, really, really fun. It's been good to just kind of just doodle in it and explore. Um, it's been a while since I've given, since I prioritized that. So I thank you guys. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to do this for you. And uh, yeah, this will definitely be happening again. I think uh, let's at least make this weekly. I'm, it, it's hard for me to go back to a drawing after a week. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, as in, I mean, I'm gonna probably have to stream sooner than later because I'm liking where this is going. And I think Venom Cat, what do we call him? Ven Venom Kitty, Venom Kitty, uh, Venomized Kitty, Carnage Kitty, Kitty Carnage, Kit Carnage, Cat Carnage Cat. <laughs> I don't know. You guys love me though. Anyways, thanks so much guys. To all of you who exist out there in the, in, in, in the endless, Faisal's void. Thank you. Thank you for spending some of your time with me. That's something that we can never get back as time. So I always appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope you guys take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.